morning or afternoon or evening, wherever it is for you. Um, I'm feeling a little festive. We've made it, made it into December, and that uh, means Christmas for us. And uh, I haven't done any decorating yet, but I have started to bake cookies and uh, got some of those in the freezer. And um, that's always fun, except I have to be real careful not to eat a lot of them because they're just my, I make my favorite ones, of course. Uh, so we're here at the uh, end of 2022, December, and we're wrapping up Garden Party Down Under. It's hard to believe it's been a whole year already, but it's now time to think about the quilting. And so we're going to talk about that some. Uh, also, I, I will look for your questions at the end, so please be happy to, to write questions in the comments, and I'll go back and look for those before we end up today. Um, you can always ask questions on the forum, but uh, since we're a live chat, I'm always happy to answer your questions. You can probably see what's behind me. There is the beginning of the 2023 Homeward Bound uh, Block of the Month quilt. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end of, of today's um, session, too, and I'll have questions for you. Some of you may be new to this, maybe have not done our Block of the Month before, and you're here because of that, because of Homeward Bound. Uh, in a few minutes, we'll go, I'll share my screen and I'll show you um, around the website a little bit too on, on how you can easily find things. Uh, I've been asked several questions, the same question over and over again about Homeward Bound and the information is right there on the, the website and I'm going to show you where you can find that. So uh, in talking about the quilting on Garden Party Down Under, I uh, quilted it my, I did mine myself. Of course, mine was made last summer. Uh, I'm the pattern tester and I check all the instructions and things like that. So I was working on my garden party down under last summer. I was really fortunate to have eight of my really good buddies, my Sunday so-and-sos, help me um, making a block each. The eight of them each made one month's worth and then I put it all together and I quilted it. So when you decide about the quilting, you're either going to quilt it yourself or you're going to quilt loving what we call by checkbook. You're going to pay someone to do your quilting for you. And um, that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. I used to do that a lot. And I've uh, once I bought a really good sit down long arm quilting machine, my Bernina Q20, about eight years ago now, I've started quilting most of my own quilts. So one of the things you can decide about quilting is how much quilting does your quilt need? You can go with pretty simple quilting, not a whole lot of it, or all the way up to heirloom custom, to really fancy quilting. And show quilting is what I call that, really high-end quilting. I've had a few quilts that were uh, quilted that way, and they look fantastic. They really made the quilt top better than it was with all of that super custom quilting. And... Um, the two that I'm thinking of also became best of show in two different shows. And then, of course, the one, the red and white quilt, became the red and white quilt from 2014, uh, the commemorative quilt for the Ruby Jubilee of, of Houston's 2014, the 40th anniversary of festival. So um, you can decide how much quilting your quilt actually needs. If I'm going to do it myself, I'm not going to do over-the-top quilting. If it's a quilt that I want to be able to use on a bed to like have a, as a cuddle kind of a quilt, I'm not going to put show quilting into it. Heavy, heavy quilting makes the quilt much stiffer than it would be if it's just simple little quilting. So you just need to decide um, what you think you, how much time, uh, effort, and or money you want to put into the quilting. So... Um, I, the blog that I wrote this past week on Wednesday, November 30th, I do a blog on Wednesdays and Sundays. So the one that was just published here November 30th, and I'll show it to you in a moment, describe my whole process for quilting my garden party down under. Before we leave today, I'm going to bring it up under the camera and show you some of these, the detail shots a little bit closer right here when we're looking at it live. Uh, if you have questions about it when I put it up there, just please put your questions in and I'll uh, attempt to answer them before we leave today. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, show you first Irene's quilt. So let me go to there. And all right, here I am on the website, the um, Quilt Show website, and I'm on the forum. You can always tell where you are when you just look here. We call these the breadcrumbs. You are here. I'm in the forum. I'm under Block of the Month, and I'm under the 2022 Garden Party Down Under Block of the Month. So this was just um, today. Someone posted this picture already uh, of hers, and I have always go in and look to see when people have posted their own. Here's a quick fun thing for you you may not know on the forum. If you click Photos, 
when you're in, this is the month 12 show your completed top here. This shows you all of the photos that were made. This, Stella needs to go back in here and, and um, upload hers again. She had trouble obviously trying to get it uh, set up in there. And I have a sticky topic post on how to post pictures on the forum that you can refer to that are right there at the, the top of Garden Party Down Under. But you can see here all the various quilt tops where people have uh, posted their quilt. Here's this wonderful one with this dark background. Um, some are kit quilts and some are not. The ones that are sideways, when you click on them, it's magic. They turn right side up. I don't know how it works, but it just works. So for the most part, that's what happens. Anyway, so that's um, that's where you can click under photos as opposed to latest activity. So let's go to learn, which is where the blocks of the month are stored. And we'll go to garden party down under and I can click on learn more. And then here on the very first month is our, um, this was the post that was put up early. It's the introduction. And I'm going to show you the 2023 one as well. It's up as well. And it has a monthly layout guide. So we're going to view it. When I come into here, I, it says, if you'd like to see photos of the quilt broken down by month, click here. And so I will click there. And then here are the various detail shots that were taken of the quilt. Here's the fur, here's the original quilt that was taken and it broke it out. This one's a great picture because it takes out, it shows you by month, uh, all the work that has to be done. If you haven't started yet or you're not a hundred percent caught up, I know a lot of people are, some are just getting started now or other people have said, well, life's intervened and I haven't gotten in there. The one thing that I've heard that is absolutely true is that month one and two were really very time consuming. I'm here to assure you that once you get past month two, each month is much simpler after that. So then you can simply click through these and these detail shots actually show you uh, a little close what the quilting looked like. That's month two here. There's a good picture of the quilting. This quilt was um, long arm quilted for Irene by an Australian long arm quilter, Rebecca Ray. And I'm going to show you her Instagram feed too, so that you can see that. But just looking at those pictures, if you want to see how Irene's was quilted, these are wonderful background fills around there um, that are just easy, easily done. Um, that's a really, they're all wonderful. And you can just see a good idea of what uh, was put onto the different quilts. Then there's some straight line quilting in the pieced blocks that made good sense. I did the same thing. And so we've got some of those. So, and it's hard to see on the borders. You'll see my borders up close here in a minute. But uh, anyway, so that's the, uh, where you can see detailed shots of Irene's. Let me get out of there. Okay. And go back to there. Okay, so then I found, uh, I went looking for Rebecca Ray, who was the quilter who quilted Irene's. And she didn't have a Facebook page, but she has an Instagram account. And her Instagram account is a stitch in line underscore machine quilting, Rebecca Ray. All I did was search Rebecca Ray, R-A-E. And I found this picture. And it's the only picture that um, she put up but it's a really good photo for you to see how elaborate the quilting is in this. See those, there's pebbles behind that border from month two. There's a lot of quilting in each one of these. There's a beautiful flower quilted on that large vase there in the middle. Um, so that's a really pretty picture. And it's, of course, on Instagram, I can't snag the picture. If, we, if I can, I don't know how. So, but that's just one I was going to show you right there. So that's uh, Rebecca Ray, R-A-E, a stitch and line underscore machine quilting. So that you can see how hers were quilted. Um... Okay, so while we're in here, I'm going to show you my blog. This is the one that I wrote November 30th. You can archive, you can find on my blog pretty easily by dates if you know the date. So the month of November lists them all in, in order. Uh, if you know it's November 30th, you can look by date. <clears throat> you also can use the search box. And on this is a Blogspot blog. It's done by Blogger. And this up here in the upper left is the search box. If you type in Garden Party Down Under, Every blog I have written about this quilt will show up in order, and you can go back and look at them. That's an easy way to do it. 
the blogs will remain and I keep being asked, are the videos going to remain on our website? Yes, our videos that I've done this year will remain as well, even after the patterns go away the end of December. So this was the blog I wrote just the other day and it's I got some detailed pictures of my own and uh, that's the back. I'll show you the back in a minute. I find that a busy back is a great place. Just put a busy fabric back there. It'll hide a myriad of sins, things you don't want people to see. Um, there's some details. I'll show you some thread here in a minute, different pictures of thread and just kind of some of the details. And then I wrote in lengthy, you've probably figured out by now, I'm a woman of many words and I write a lot of words here. So I've got all my step-by-steps on how I do this particular thing. Uh, this little picture is one that I, and I didn't get the tool over here, but it's just a piece of plexiglass. It's about 18 by 24. My husband loves to buy me notions at Lowe's. So I sent him up there several years ago and he got a, a piece of plexiglass, which they cut for you to the size you want. And then I put a piece of uh, wrap painter's tape all around it. That's important because you're gonna use a dry erase marker to um, audition different designs. You can just write right on that. Um, you can sort of see in this picture, I've got some red uh, dry erase marker along there where I did that. Just playing, um, see what I think of it. And if I don't like it, a simple tissue takes it right off and then I can try something else. But the, with the dry erase marker, if you don't have tape or something to protect those edges, you can take that dry erase marker and go right off the side of that plexiglass onto your quilt and that would make you cry. That would be sad. So the painter's tape is to protect you from doing that. But anyway, I have a lot of details word by word. And then I have written about ruler work and some of my other quilting methods several times. And I just put three of the big ones up that uh, this long post called Ruler Work, the basics is very long and it has a lot of information. And here are my uh, some of my beloved so-and-sos. These are the, the eight women who helped me get this quilt made last summer. So that's where we are on that. Um, okay. Let me go back to the document camera now and right, get my quilt over here. All right. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you'll be able to see a good bit of this. Um, I just played with different designs and I put different kind of quilting designs in the background. First for thread, I, uh, I know that my strength is not my quilting my machine quilting. I'm getting better at it the more I do. Obviously, that's a good thing. You should get better at if you practice things, but but it is still not my strength. So I'm not going to use a thread that's very strong, high contrast, or or even thick. I'm going to use a finer thread. So the first thing I do with all of my quilts is I stitch in the ditch pretty much the way the quilts were manufactured, were constructed. So I went from top to bottom on the borders and I used micro quilter, uh, a white thread because this was a very light quilt. And this is 100 weight micro quilter. You can't even see it here in my hand. It's very, it's a real fine thin, thin thread. It does the trick of holding the three layers together. Let's see if I can put a little piece of it right there. But it is fine and it um, it's designed for, if you're gonna do heavy quilting, a lot of stippling and background quilting where if you had a thick thread, it would really build up. You get a lot of thread buildup. So, um, but I use this, uh, I use bottom line in the bottom, which is a 60 weight polyester thread and this micro quilter is a 100 weight and I used white for the top so the first thing that I did with this quilt is I, as I described in that lengthy blog post but I did all of the stitch in the ditch right along the seams the same way I constructed the quilt and my favorite tool ruler um, these are called rulers, but they're really more accurately described as templates because a ruler is something we measure with and we don't measure with this ruler. We use it to hold, um, put the foot in. What I like about this, this is the Line Tamer, L-I-N-E-T-A-M-E-R, ruler by Four Paws Quilting, is um, my ruler foot, which is exactly a half an inch around, and the needle is in the center of that. It's one quarter inch away from the edge of the ruler. Fits right exactly in here. And I can, if I have pieced straight, I can lay this ruler right along where I want to stitch in the ditch. And as long as I don't wiggle the ruler while I'm stitching, it'll stay straight. And as long as my piecing is straight. And my piecing is pretty good, so I don't have to worry about that too often. And I have tricks for when it gets off 
but you have to fix that. So I would look at each background and think, what am I going to do? Sometimes I did straight line quilting, and this one is one of those diagonal lines. And I just use that line tamer to set my lengths of how wide apart I want them to be. Some of times I used the um, border. I'm going to move this around again. And this is probably going to be a little bit difficult. Here's the middle. And the middle was the only one that I thought I was going to do something different. And I didn't like it when I got it all done. Um, I did some straight line quilting. And when I got done that, and I spent a couple hours doing the middle. And when I really looked at it, I went, no, I don't like it. So that night, I spent a couple more hours taking it out. And then the next day, I went back in again. And I just did simple little squiggles right in here, just little loop-de-loops and all of this. And I would get close into a petal and echo around them, come in and around, just sort of going everywhere I wanted to go, and just sit there and kind of have fun going around them. These motifs are small enough that there's almost none that really require additional stitching. Mine were fused in place and then machine stitched. They're turned edge uh, under and then they were machine stitched in place. So they're not going to come apart. I did stitch around this one. I went around those blue petals and I also went around that yellow one in there. Using this fine white thread, you just don't have to even change thread colors for this kind of simple little work. It just went really, really quickly, and I just echoed around the different shapes. When I was deciding what to do on these um, do dog tooth borders, I love to use rulers. It's my favorite way of, um, because I can quilt really well. My machine makes great stitches, and if I use a good ruler that fits, the stitching comes out looking really good, and that's what I'm after. So this one, I used a semicircle ruler. Let me bring my finger over here. And I just, again, I used the plexiglass to start with and my dry erase ruler and said, what's this going to look like if I do this? So I just, here was my path. I went up here and to the point and then back here to this point, come over here to this point, to this point, all the way around. Um, when I got back to the other side, then I simply came back in on the lower side, which is these beige um, light colored background. And I just went up here and here all the way around and it was just it was a good amount of fill uh, it filled the space well enough i like the shape the curve is a nice accent to the very linear diamond and triangle shapes and it was just and it was easy so that's what i'm after i want shapes that that are easy but look like they belong where you did them uh, sometimes I would let the background fabric tell me what to do. So this is my month two border, and it's got this little built-in swirly little swirl. And I went, perfect, that's what I'm going to do. I didn't try to follow those lines. It would have driven me crazy to try to do that much quilting. But I just simply did these little curvy curly cues and moved around, and I just moved from place to place. And again, I um, echoed around the different uh, leaf shapes and the circles. I went in the middle of this circle and I just came in and came back out. It's such fine thread that you don't see it. I did not stitch on any of these particular um, leaf shapes because they were small enough that they didn't need that. There are a few shapes that are large enough that they definitely need some sh additional quilting. So here's one of these baskets. Um, the coloration here is pretty dark. I, it would help probably if I turned on the light that goes here. And I even forgot to turn on my uh, ring light today, too, so I'm a little bit in the dark. I purposely chose this basket weave print. It's an old uh, purple print I've had for a long time. I love it. It's And I had it in lots of colors. It was a great basket weave fabric to go in the basket weave design. And I simply used the line tamer ruler to um, put the ruler in place where I started and then I could use the edge of the ruler to give me the length so they're about here's a line here's a line here's a line so they're about an inch apart and I came through the middle and each side there so there's not a tremendous amount of quilting but there's enough to hold it with machine quilting and this was true in the old days when we did everything by hand as well as machine quilting, you want it to be a balanced amount. You don't want super, super heavy quilting somewhere and then a lot less quilting as you get to the outside or vice versa. You don't want real loose stuff in the middle and a very heavily quilted border on the outside. The quilt is simply not going to lay flat and it's going to be a challenge for you to get it to, to look really good. 
So there's a few of these shapes. The baskets were uh, designs that all absolutely needed some quilting. And then I'll just pull up one of these here. Here's a, one of these vases. Come on, let's get you under here under the cap. All right. So the vases, now while these were um, fused in place and, and applique down, they're not going to come off, but this is way too much space to leave unquilted compared to everything else. This background, I just did a diagonal, a 60 degree hanging grid. They call that a diagonal grid. But on here, again, I found it very helpful using my plexiglass and the um, dry erase marker. I wanted to draw some lines that kind of gave it the feel of this roundedness. This is a, a picture and it's round. And so I just drew some of these lines with the ruler or my pen on that piece of plexiglass to see what I thought. And this probably could have had one more layer of it, but I got that far again and stopped. I also changed thread colors. If I had put this quilting on top of this blue vase with this white thread, you would see it. And again, I'm not trying to show off my quilting. I just want the texture from this particular quilt. So I used a, a fairly dark blue that was pretty close to this. Same thing with the basket I showed you a minute ago. I changed a purple thread. So um, there's different weights of thread, and I think this is a good place for me to show it. This is this 100 weight thread. Then um, here's another great thread. I like Quilter Select. This is the 60 weight. This is a cotton wrapped polyester thread. And you might be able to even see, well, it's hard for you to see on there. You can see it over here. It's a little bit thicker than this one is. Then we could go all the way to King Tut, which is a 40 weight thread. And it's thicker yet again. And another 40 weight thread that I like sometimes when I want my quilting to show is Glide. And it is very, look at the difference in the, the sheen that you get with a Glide thread. This one's uh, 40 weight. This is a 40 weight, um, but this is King Tut and this is Glide. And so the, the shinier the thread is, the more it's going to show. The more of a matte thread, a non-shiny thread, the more it's going to dissolve into the background. This may actually be what what I used on here. Hard to tell. And a lot of the King Tuts are lightly variegated, so that adds a nice little touch as well. So there is not one perfect thread for quilting. There's not one perfect design for quilting. Um, when I was trying to get better at machine quilting, and I really, um, it, was, <laughs> it was the bane of my existence for probably 25 years, but when I finally just started putting in a lot of time and effort to, to try to get better at it, I convinced myself that really I don't have to know how to make 100 different designs. I need to pick four of my favorite designs and go with that. And once I could learn four or five of those, so I have some favorites on here and this, this loop-de-loop -loop one, this one with the semicircles was great. Little loop-de-loop -loop stuff. This one over here that we talked about already, that's really easy. Um, then I got to the outside border, and we're about done with me shoving this thing under the camera. But I did the same thing on the border. When I got to the diamond borders, I thought, you know, these diamonds are half the shape of the dog tooth border. So why don't I just do the exact same thing here? It'll just take two passes. So just looking at this line here, again, I used a semicircular, a plastic circle ruler that I could stitch right along the edge. Went from here to here. I just looped these all the way around on this half of the diamond. I got down to the far side and I came back. Came back to the other side, came back to the other side. When you're machine quilting, you want to know where you're going to start and where you're going to stop. And you want to avoid starting and stopping where you have to tie off the threads as often as possible. So if I was just going to go around each one of these diamonds, when I got back, that's another possibility. I could have come right back here and done all of this too. I think I went from side to side, but um, I might have done them all at once. I, I, To tell you the truth, I don't absolutely remember. This was a year and a half ago that I quilted this. But this is how you could get that you could go in half or you could do the whole thing. And then I did the same thing out here in the borders. I love how it looks. That's just enough quilting. It's in balance with the rest of the quilting that I put in the rest of the quilt. And it it didn't need extra work. Could you put more in? Sure. Could you put lots more little matchstick quilting in here? You bet. Could you fill it in with pebbles and circles? Absolutely. But at some point I just had to say this is enough already. 
the other thing that I did here is I had this one little, this is about a three quarter of an inch filler floater border here. And it needed something and a straight line down the middle of it is not particularly exciting. So I just did some loop-de-loops kind of things. They're not circles, they're loop-de-loops. And so this one comes around here. I went over under, so let me see if I can find my path. I went uh, this way and then this way and this way and this way and this way and just spacing them out pretty evenly throughout the thing. No marking, I just free motioned them. If I wanted to do pebbles in a row, which you see a lot of people do, especially on show quilts, where each petal is exactly next to the one next to it, yes, they have to be as round as you can make them. Yes, you really want them to just touch the sides of each other. By doing it this way, I could just kind of wing it. As long as I got close enough, I was fine all the way down. So that's what I put on this inside floater border. When I got to the outside, originally my plan had been to trim this when I got the quilt all finished. So it was the same size as this. But when I got it all done, before I could quilt this last outside border, it was time to decide if I was going to cut this off or not. And I decided I was not going to cut it off. The extra size was just nice. It added a little bit, probably another three quarters of an inch to the quilt. It was one less job that I didn't have to do, which would have been to trim this exact border, this outer, last outer border to be the same size as the inside one. And I said, okay, great. If the circles worked over here, the circles are going to work here. They're just going to be larger. And so I've got this one where I just came around. He's a loop to loop. Let me see where I went this way and then this way over, under, over, under, over, under, just kind of, you know, moving my way along. It worked great. And um, I really like that. That's a go to little border filler for me. It doesn't it's not hard to do. And it's um, it fills the space nicely. Choosing for uh, we used to say the same thing about hand quilting for different reasons. When I would teach people hand quilting back 100 years ago, when we taught the beginning classes, everybody hand quilted their whole quilt. Of course, they hand pieced it too. But um, I would say, put a busy back on the back. Don't put a solid or a light solid, of, you know, on white or something like that, unless you want every single thing to show, including with hand quilting, the blood droplets, because I would always get blood on the back of my quilt for hand quilting. So we shouldn't have that problem today with machine quilting, but there's there are places when you zigged when you should have zagged and things didn't get quite right. If you're changing thread colors a lot, some people change the bobbin thread as well as the top threads. Um, a busy back like this will uh, hide a myriad of sins. So uh, this was a good choice. This is wide goods. It's a friendship fabric. It talks a lot about friends. This quilt means a lot to me because of the friends who helped me get it made and the friendships that we have here in our wonderful worldwide quilting community. A lot of you are personal friends of mine. We've, we've gotten to meet over the years. And so uh, it's just a lot about friendship and lots and lots of it. So this fabric came from the quilt show store and I have, they keep running out of it because people buy it for the backs of great quilts and then they have to order more. So, um, but that's where I got it from. And uh, I would certainly buy it again for another quilt if I had one about um, friendship that I wanted to do. While I have this up here and then we'll go back to the um, scene and I can look for your questions is, I am a stickler for labels. Let me turn this one around so you can read it. I should have put that in the blog. I'll go back and add this to the blog. Um, I My handwriting is terrible. So I use my printer to make my labels so that you can actually read them. And down the 100 years from now, somebody can still read it. I'm, I'm a big proponent of labels. And I believe that every quilt should have a label. And it should tell the who, what, why, when, and where. Who made it? Why did you make it? When did you make it? Where did you live? If you made it for someone specifically, who was that made for? If you're not the designer of the pattern, that person's name should go there. And if you're not the quilter, that person's name should go there. So mine just says Garden Party Down Under, 2022 block of the month for the quiltshow.com, designed by Irene Blank. Sunday So-and-So's group project assembled and quilted by Barbara Black, Huntsville, Alabama, 2021. Very important last sentence here. Wool bat air dry only. I love a wool bat. I love how soft it is to sleep under. I love how nicely it quilts. The only concern is that it shouldn't be thrown into a hot dryer. Some of the wool bats do tell you that you can 
uh, air dry them or light on a low temperature dry. But once the quilt's finished and nobody is going to know, and I unfortunately, I'm not going to live forever. So I'm not going to be able to tell everybody down the road, hey, this quilt has wool batting in it. Don't throw it in a hot dryer. It can be machine washed. Then I just simply lay it to air dry on a, a low humidity a breezy day. Uh, this quilt will dry very quickly under those kind of conditions. So a label is very important. Irene shows a label that she made that you can use for inspiration on your quilt. But certainly, um, if you have good handwriting and a permanent pen, that's a good way to do it. You can write. Um, I take a piece of fabric if I'm going to write it uh, and iron freezer paper to the back side of it, press freezer paper on that gives it a little bit of stability. And you don't want to put it on a slick surface. It's hard to draw nicely or write ni legibly that way. But um, so anyway, labels are really important. So that's kind of the basics here. Let's go back to webcam. All righty, get this off of throw him over there and check my notes and see how we're doing. Okay. Okay. The last important thing to remind you about with Garden Party Down Under, I know you've heard me say this a hundred times already, but we'll say it one more time. It's on the newsletter um, daily, the newsletter that comes out every few times a week. We only have the patterns available through December 31st of 2022. After that, the designer, Irene Blank, gets her rights to them back, and she will then begin to sell them on her website. If you haven't finished or you haven't started and you want these patterns, as a star member, they are free to you for this entire year. Download them, save them, print them, whatever you have to do. Put them on thumb drives, save them somewhere where you can find them again. Um, make sure that you do those because after December 31st of this year, we will no longer have any access to them and we can't give them to you and no one else who's gotten them for free can give them to you either because that's copyright violation. So uh, please, we remind you of that. We remind you of that and uh, encourage you to, to do that, um, to get those done. Um, okay, so we'll talk about Homeward Bound here quickly. Uh, we're getting, yeah. Um, I'm going to be real quick about it. So uh, let me just show you. I want to share one more thing back in here, and then I'll go look for questions. All righty. Okay. So go over here, back to garden party down under. All right. So under learn, when I go to learn, and I can go to right there, it comes right up, homeward bound, learn more. You can also find it under block of the month. And here is the big picture of Sarah Filpe's wonderful quilt, Homeward Bound. And when you come to this website, click on Homeward Bound 2023 Introduction of Fabric Requirements with a coloring guide. Click on View. When you go there, the first place, whenever we go to any of these um, pages for the block of the month, the first thing you come to is videos. The video that... Um, was done November 3rd with Alex revealing it is show there. You can continue to see that all the time. So there's that picture. You click on that. When you come over here to patterns and documents, you find the patterns and documents for each month. And this one happens to be for just the introduction. So there is a coloring guide. Sarah designs like this. This is how she does her design. She first just sketches out her idea. Uh, these are not templates. These are not meant for you to use to figure out how it was pieced together. It's just a sketch. And if you were trying to plan your own fabric choices, that would be a good way for you to do that. So that's a coloring guide. All right. And then the next one, the most important file I'm going to show you here is this one, Homeward Bound Introduction and Fabric Requirements. I can view it to make it fast. I'm not downloading it. And then this is the information. There are 16 pages here. It tells you what you can expect. It tells you about the material, the fabrics requirements. There's that sketch done in color. This lays out what Sarah describes as her borders, one, two, three, four, and five, how she's broken it out, and then her notions, different things she likes, and then the material requirements. Here they are starting on page five. The one question I have been asked repeatedly from people who haven't looked at this yet is, do you have any idea how much background fabric is necessary for the 2023 Homer Bound? Yes, I do. Right here under the fabric, this was the background fabric that I re, um, that Sarah used. We were not able to get that fabric anymore, so we have this wonderful piece that looks similar to that, but it's little tiny um, squares, I think. They're, they're just adorable. And it's a beautiful fabric. It's really, really nice. Five and a quarter yards. But I bought 
six yards. Since I, I didn't have my kit and I needed to get started, I chose a different kind of a color. Um, you can see on each fabric, and I'm just going to scroll down just one more page here, just some of these. It shows you each fabric and what month it's used in. So this sweet pea fabric is used in month one for cabin walls. It's used in month 10 as leaves. This measurement out here tells you how wide a piece you have in your kit. Six inches wide by width of fabric. It's used in just those two months. Um, month seven, uh, this one, month nine and month 10 is used as the bird's back wing and large triangles in month 10. And there was seven inches of it. Some of the fabrics here, this one, there's only a two inch wide strip of fabric. It's used in month nine for leaves. So if you have the kit, you are definitely going to want to refer to this document frequently each month. So you figure out which fabrics to use for the various places. Can you change your mind? Sure. Can you use something else? Absolutely. What happens? happens if you run out, you just substitute something else. That's just the way that goes. But um, that is the place under Learn Block of the Month where you will find the information. Uh, the January 1st is a Sunday, and that's when the first month's pattern will come out. I will have done a blog also with some suggestions that first month, and I'm going to put my head over here, the middle, the first, unlike Irene's 2022, this is not very labor intensive right in the beginning. So in the beginning we make those pieces you see on the on my wall up there are parts of the first five months. So that first little house in the middle is a four inch house. I made three of them before I got one I was really happy with. Whoops, I'm getting my head out of the way. And I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to paper piece this. So my blog that will go up for January 1st, I will show you how you can draw a pattern for yourself. I'm not going to give you the pattern. I'm going to teach you to fish and show you how you can do that. So, uh, okay, now it is time for me to go look and see if we have any questions. So let me go over there and find them. Okay, back to the beginning here. All righty. Oakland, Tennessee, Oregon, Galena, Ohio, Lakeland, Florida. Okay, someone had problems printing the patterns for 2022. Torrance, California. <laughs> Cold North Carolina. San Antonio. Too bad this is coming to an end. Alina, um, uh, she's uh, one of our uh, international uh, members, and she is sorry this one's coming to an end. Well, the next one's just as good, if not better, so we hope you'll be joining us with that, too. Um, and Elena, thank you for your wonderful lessons and <laughs> my dedication. Um, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it takes some time to put this all together. Hello from Alaska. Hello, Alaska. It could be cold up there, too. Any quilting suggestions for hand quilting with big stitches? I love hand quilting with big stitches. That is great. You can certainly do that. Um, that it's fast. That's what I like about it. I can do fine hand quilting, but it would take me two years to fine hand quilt this particular quilt. So I'm much faster with the big stuff. Um, well, we have to get rid of those best adult dating sites. I don't think any of us, we're too busy as quilters. We don't need those. Um, great label. Embroider good. Melanie says she embroiders her label. That's terrific. Um, another person who thanked me good. Good to do. I like that. How did I attach the label to the back? After I printed the label, I print, I, I wait till I have enough to fill an entire piece of, I just use a Word document and I design labels and keep a running list of ones that need labels. And then I print them and cut them apart. And I have found that that fabric, it's a, it's a pre-printed, it's a fabric that's prepared to go through printers. There's several brands. One is from Electric Quilt. Um, another one's called Printed Treasures. It's got paper backing so you can run it through your desk jet printer, not laser jet. Very important, not a laser jet. Um, and then I just found it, but it's hard to turn that under because it's a heavy, thick, um, it's a really densely woven fabric. So I simply started making little borders of the exact same fabric I used for the back, back fabric. I made a little border around it and turned those under and hand applicated in place. So that's how I did that. Um, okay. Did you show that? I didn't show the outside flowers. Did you apple quilt over your applique? No. Um, did it, the Kelly wants to know, did I quilt over my appliques with a crosshatch? I didn't. I just started and, and I didn't start and stop. 
that fine thread, these, you know, this micro quilter, which is really fine. I just would stitch right along an edge and stitch right over it and move to the next place. So, um, this, but the outside flowers, I did the exact same way. Um, I can pull it up again and take, I think I, I have a picture of it on the blog that I did. Where did, to get the 100 way thread? My micro quilter is from Superior Threads and I get mine at the big shows. Of course at Houston, I was just there. Um, and I do want to say in Houston, many of you, at least 50 of you came up to me at Houston, sought me out, said, oh, I know who you are. Oh, you know, thank you for what you do. And, uh, they, and they wanted to show me their quilts, which I was very happy to see. Uh, and everybody who came and said something nice to me, I said, do you want to see next year's? And everybody said, oh, yes, yes, yes. So I pulled out my phone and showed them pictures of this next one, which was before the rest of the world got to, to see it on November 3rd. So um, that was just my little gift to them to show them what was coming on. And um, so anyway, I like the Superior's thread. You can get it off their website. Um, some quilt stores carry it as well. It comes in a whole lot of colors and um, the it's it's called micro quilter. And now 100 weight silk thread is also 100 weight and Superior sells it. Other brands, YLI has a silk. It's very, very expensive compared to this polyester thread. So I have a lot of silk. I use it on some special things, but um, not for something I'm going to use a lot of thread on. So, all right, well, we have taken up time again. So let me go back over here. Okay, uh, well, we've, and every time I say to myself, nah, this won't take 30 minutes, and here we are closing in on three quarters of an hour. Um, anyway, uh, for those of you who are star members who are here because you are doing the block of the month, we appreciate you so much. We thank you so much for being star members. It's what keeps uh, the quilt show going, and we've been, I've been happy to be a member ever since it began. Um, gosh, going on 15 years now. Uh, remind your friends, this is a great place to learn a lot of things. Even if you don't want to do the block of the month, there's tremendous amounts of stuff. I learn something from every single show. Um, the I'll just finish by saying happy holidays and to all of you in whatever way you celebrate. Our friends that are in the Southern Hemisphere are going into summer, which I find hard to wrap my head around that December for us is winter. Um, but uh, people all over the world are part of our wonderful community. So uh, as we say on the quilt show all the time, it's a new day every day. And uh, so uh, until next time, that's a wrap.